All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is Saturday, March 20th, 2021, voting list number 15. This is the Environment and Transportation Committee. I'm the chairman, Kumar Barve. I'm joined by my vice chairman, Dana Stein, and the wonderful members of the Environment and Transportation Committee. And I'm going to go a little out of order here. I want to do House Bill 857, uh, Delegate Lehman's Synthetic Turf Bill. Um, Dana, are you prepared to? Yes. Yes, yes, Mr. Yes. Chairman. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, this bill requires a producer of synthetic turf and turf infill sold or distributed in the state and an owner of previously installed synthetic turf and turf infill to establish a system to track the chain of custody of affected products. The chain of custody information must be transmitted to MDE. Um, this bill was not taken up by the subcommittee. It was jointly assigned with ECM, ECM voted the bill unfavorable, but uh, I'd like to move uh, favorable on the bill, Mr. Chairman. Thank Second. you. Second. Um, I, I just wanna say that um, I think the, del uh, the sponsor did a terrific job conscientiously trying to accommodate the interests of the industry. Uh, I believe she succeeded and uh, I'm gonna vote for the bill. I think, it's a, I think it's a good bill. And I will say that um, this issue of, um, of turf fields and their disposal is going to be a hot issue over the next 10 years. And I think we should address it sooner rather than later. And with that, I'd like to recognize the sponsor of the bill. Thank you so much, Mr. Chairman. And I would like to thank Vice Chair Stein and um, Chairman Barve for really fighting for this bill. I think they totally get that this is you know, a concern. This is a serious waste issue. I did work right up to the end to bring the industry groups on board. They were all on board. Um, even the turf industry, <clears throat> excuse me, and the tire industry who recognized it for what it is, a chain of custody and a reporting requirement, both said to me personally, I, I, we see that you're not trying to put us out of business and you're just trying to have transparency and accountability. So I will be bringing the bill back next year, but I just want to thank um, Vice Chair Stein and Chair Barve because they tried really, really hard to make the case uh, for me with leadership. And I just so deeply appreciate that. And I'm committed to the issue. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else before we go to a roll call vote? You want to say, uh, yes, uh, Delegate Jacobs. So a bill was found unfavorable in the ECM. So vote from this committee won't change the end result. Is that correct? That's correct. So we're, we're this this is just a, uh, a vote by the members of the committee of for the for the sponsor basically right? Yeah, I mean yes, I mean I, that that's part of my motivation, but I also believe in the issue as well. Okay, uh, but you're right, it's symbolic. Delegate Toronto, okay. you're okay. All right, okay, Trish, roll call. Uh, Mr. Chairman, if I may. Oh, sure, um, Charles. Uh, it, I guess it's more history than anything. My first term here on this committee, uh, similar advocates that are for Delegate Lehman's bill here uh, were trying to get program open space money to pay for these fields, to put a, install them. Uh, I say that I think she has done good work and I appreciate what you said to uh, uh, to accommodate those things. And uh, we were all here working together, but I was against uh, program open space money going to install these fields. And I'm certainly willing to step up for doing what we can to uh, uh, do the right thing for the environment. So uh, thank you, but I'm gonna vote against this bill. Okay, um, all right, roll call. Vice Chair Stein? Yes. Holmes? Yes. Learman? Yes. Sorry. 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 Fraser Hidalgo? Yes. Otto? No. Jacobs? This bill was ended up as a reporting bill. Is that correct? Correct. Yes. But, sorry, what was Jacobs? He was a yes. Weivel. No. Amprey. Yes. Silverity. 
We're working on finding him. Okay. <laughs> uh, he, uh, I don't think he'll be in today. He's lost. He had, okay. a, he had a, another commitment. Okay. Um, okay. More important than this. Absent. Wells? Yes. Love? Yes. Ruth? Yes. Stewart? Yes. Layman? Yes. Harrison? Yes. Teresa? Yes. Parrot? You're muted, Neil. You're muted. Sorry. Um, no. That's a no. But I like the sponsor very much. <laughs> uh, Boyd. Yes. Clark. Yes. Jaleesi. Yes. Anderton. He's in the meeting, but he's having trouble with audio. Okay. Uh, just keep going, and after I vote, we'll... Uh, Gilcrest? Yes. Healy? Yes. Chairman Mr. votes Chair. Chairman votes yes. And is Cornbread connected yet? It just says connecting to audio. Okay, well, um, give him an excused absence. He made a good effort there. Okay. And, okay, so let's go to House Bill 44. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. House Bill 44 was voted out of subcommittee favorably several weeks ago. There were some hitches along the way. Um, and so I probably would be best for me to kick this to Patrick to kind of explain what the problems um, with this bill are. Uh, so, and then we're gonna have to do an amendment. Okay, Patrick. Patrick, you're muted. Where's my, are you muted? Sorry. Oh, okay. Okay. Sorry. Okay. okay. Right when the federal stimulus um, passed a couple weeks ago, there was a provision in it that prohibited us from backfilling um, funds and tax credits with this, which meant, which meant basically that the money that we did for this going forward would not only would we pay that, but the feds would claw it back. So we would lose that. And obviously it's thrown kind of the whole budget and other things into disarray, including this bill. So basically after working with the speaker's office, the attorney general and the um, a federal delegation, um, we've come to the conclusion that we can continue the rebate program with the increase and we can go to the backlog and take 10 million of the 12 million that was in the bill and get rid of the backlog of people who are waiting for their tax credit for electric vehicles. But it takes out anything on electric vehicle tax credit going forward. So that's all it does is 10 million to get rid of the backlog of people waiting for tax credits. And it um, keeps the rebate program going and increases it from 1.2 to 1.8 million, which was in the original bill. Does it do anything with respect to uh, infrastructure? Nothing. No. Okay. All right. Uh, and can I, may I, Mr. Chairman? Yeah. Well, let me move the amendment. Uh, move the amendment. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Second. Dave, David. So I know that, um, I mean, I've been working on this bill as I, I want to thank the subcommittee for just being patient. We worked on this bill. We got this bill in the exact posture that we needed it last year. And then it got got COVIDed. And then um, we came out of the box early this year. We got it in the exact right posture through a lot of conversations with the subcommittee and a lot of negotiating with everybody involved. And now uh, we are running into this. There is, there is um, some debate as to, um, you know, how the tax credits would affect this bill. But I think that the safe thing to do based on what the speaker's office is saying is to do it uh, this way, at least for now. And then next year, hopefully we can uh, when we have more clarity uh, from the attorney general and all involved, hopefully next year we can come back and and um, maybe the third time will be a charm. Next year. Yeah, or if 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 we get clarity between now and signy die, I'm sure yes. your senator uh, in the finance committee could uh, uh, help the bill out if 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 we yeah. get greater clarity. Clarity. Okay, Delegate Ruth and Delegate Weivel in that order. 
Thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I just, I, I don't see the amendment. I just wanted to get some clarification on um, what, what the amendment does. So I heard you say we were going to backfill people waiting for their credit. I think I heard you say that it's still expanding the funding to 1.8 million, is, is that correct? No, that's for the electric vehicle infrastructure rebate program. Okay. It currently exists, has existed for a while. The bill as drafted raised the um, amount that they could give from rebates from 1.2 to 1.8 million. That's staying in the bill. That's got nothing to do with the EV tax credit, but it's that's okay. infrastructure, charging stations. I understand. Thank you so much. Delegate Weivel. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm still a little confused on the amendment. So the, the 10 million that's being funded for the backlog was that basically a promise to those folks and their money just wasn't there? Yes. Yes, yeah. they're on the waiting list. Um, okay, and then what was the source, what's the source of funding? Strategic Steve. Energy Investment Fund, Steve. Steve. Okay. In the and budget how, this year. And then how about going forward with the, so it's being raised from 1.2 million to 1.8 million? That's the, that's the infrastructure program. That's the charging stations. And what's so? What's the source of funding for that? That's CIF also. Okay, thank you. In, in essence, there won't be money going forward for the actually car the cars themselves as part of the the, the really largest part of the bill. Um, but we will be backfilling and making those people whole that have purchased their EVs based on um, our policy in the past. So we'll be making those people whole, which is extremely important. We just won't um, have the uh, incentives uh, going forward, at least not until hopefully we can come back um, next year. All right, thank you. Okay, on the amendment, all those in favor of the amendment signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, the amendments carry. The bill is amended before us. Is there a second? Second. 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 Okay, any, any debate on the bill before we vote? Okay. Um, all those, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Who's, who's opposed? Anybody opposed? Neil Parrott is opposed. Anyone else? Uh, okay, we're good. The bill carry, uh, the bill pa passes. House Bill 253. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Chair. House Bill 253 received a favorable report from the subcommittee the bill alters the definitions of community association and local co code violation in statutory provisions that authorize a community association in Baltimore County to seek injunctive or other equitable relief in the circuit court for Baltimore County for nuisance abatement. There are no amendments and I move the bill, Mr. Chair. Is there a second? Second. Second. Um, Weivel, do you have your hand up from the last bill or do you? <coughs> speak on this one. Last bill, sorry. Okay. Uh, any discussion before we vote? Uh, Delegate Jalisi. Yes, sir. Um, so my, my question is, uh, does it still not require the community associations to be anything more than uh, paper association? Is there a requirement for having any membership, submit a bond if, the, if they block, try to block their development, or that's not even an issue in this time? Because I think it's the third time, remember? I, I I heard part of your question. Okay, I'm breaking the, up. The, the, Let me the, you want me to repeat it? No. No, I, no, I, I think we heard enough. Go ahead and answer. Okay. Yeah, the part of the amendment uh, strikes the provision that it has to be 20% of the community, uh, but there is still a requirement that uh, they have to be incorporated and in good, sta and in good standing with SDAT. No, what I have, my question was regarding any membership uh, to these bodies and if they decide to go and block a development, are they, uh, in, the, in the past they were required to post a bond or some sort of a financial, uh, you know, instrument. Um, so are, is that what is being stricken out now? No requirement for membership or yeah. no requirement for financial responsibility? The membership provision has been removed. 
uh, previously it required that 25% of the households uh, in a community of more than 40 individuals have to be members. Uh, and that, has, that was stricken uh, from the, the bill. Okay, and what about the financial? Uh, wasn't there uh, previously a responsibility of the of a body or an organization that was trying to block um, a development well, in the county to have I, some sort I, of a skin in the game? I'm not sure about the blocking part of your question, but there was a part in the bill that required a a fee for membership, and that was stricken also. I'm not. I don't think that the I don't see anything in the bill that is relevant to blocking, but there previously was a no. membership payment and that is stricken from the bill as well. No, no, I think you misunderstood my blocking word. Maybe I should use a different one. If, the, if this community association, which does not have any members and the only requirement is to be registered with SDAT and be in good standing, it could be a community association that I could form tomorrow to protest or invalidate or challenge a, a development that you might be doing in a particular neighborhood. So my question to you was, do I have to have anything else besides a 300, uh, besides a registration with SDAT? Elegant Jalisi, the um, community association would still have to be composed of residents of a community. Um, right. it, it, but no membership. No, 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 let, let him answer the question, Jay. Right. Go ahead. I mean, I've, I've seen this for three years. Okay, well, go, go ahead. Go ahead and uh, answer it. Yeah, go ahead. Answer right. So, so the, the, the community association would still have to be composed of residents of the community that's um, and the, within a defined geographic boundaries that's set in the bylaws or charter of the community association. Right. Um, so there's not a set membership requirement, but it's still right. representative of the community. And consist of members of the community. Um, I've, I've got a question. Are, are there any other lo locations in Maryland that, that have a provision like this in the law? Yes, this um, this is making uh, the the law on community association standing for filing a nuisance actions uh, similar to Baltimore City. But no other location, right? No other county. Yeah, there, other counties there. have. Other well, counties yeah. have standing provisions in, in okay. law for uh, community associations to file nuisance actions, but uh, they're not consistent with what Baltimore County is doing here. Right, Baltimore they require County. membership. They require okay, actual let, membership. Okay, uh, let, let's oh, thank go you. My question, my question has been answered. Thank you very much, I understand. De Delegate Ruth. Th thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, doesn't the bill still require that it be a uh, uh, exempt from taxation under 501c3 or um, whatever the other one is. Yes. Yes, it does. Thank you. And then my subsequent question would be, if it is, uh, does it count from the date after it gets a 501c3 exemption or is it prior to it? Well, you like, have to get the, I, you, have sorry, to, you have to file first in order to be qualified for the exemption. Okay. Uh, yeah, but 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 the, but okay, the exemption well, becomes effective from the date you file, even if it happens six months later. So what I'm trying to understand is what does the bill say about this? It, the bill doesn't indicate uh, a time frame where the non-exempt status kicks in. I would suggest that the non-exempt status kicks in based upon federal IRS guidelines. Right. So uh, it would be okay. Okay, let me, let me recognize the vice chair of the committee. Yes, sir. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, th this is a local bill and we have passed it a couple times before. So, you know, we, we do have uh, prior history with this bill. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna go to a vote. I think we've discussed this a lot and I mean, we're not super late or anything, but um, uh, Trish, um, roll call. Mm. Vice Chair Stein? Yes. Holmes? Yes. Learman? Yes. Frazier Hidalgo? Yes. Otto? Charles? Uh, this is Bill 253? Correct. All right. 
Yes. Are you vote? Yes. Okay. Jacobs. Yes. Weibel. Yes. Ampre. Yes. Silberti. I sent a message about that. Wells. Yes. Love. Yes. Ruth. Yes. Stewart. Yes. Layman. If Weibel voted yes, I'm definitely voting yes. <laughs> Harrison. Yes. Tarasa. Yes. Parent. Yes. Boyce. You're muted. Sorry, yes. Clark. Yes. Jalisi. No. And I want to explain my vote. I think okay. it's bad public policy. It allows the developers to fight each other proxy battles by forming these fake organizations uh, and blocking development in our neighborhoods. And I think it is bad. And I voted for it, against it every time that it has come before me. And, I've, and we've seen this in case of uh, development on Rice's Town Road, where one developer was trying to block the other using these vehicles. So that is why I vote against it. Thank you. Okay. Anderton. Yes. Gilcrest. Yes. Healy. Yes. Chairman votes yes. yes. And I understand that uh, Barry, uh, Barry's absence uh, this voting session is excused. I, I, I'll ex get it all excused absences. Okay, the, the bill passes. House Bill 444. Who has that one? Oh, um, Ann, that... We're, that's a yes, I, I have that one. Correct. Can you yeah. hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Thank you very much. Um, yes, House Bill 444. The subcommittee did not meet on this. This is a local bill that we just heard yesterday of <coughs> Curtis County. Uh, Delegate Jay Walker presented it. And the amendments uh, simply clarify that it only applies on the Prince George's side of the National Capital Park and Planning Commission pro uh, projects and so forth. And um, if you like, I could give you more detail. No, that's okay. Is there a second? Second. second. Okay. Any discussion on the bill? I, uh, did you have your hand up from the previous bill? Dana, do you want to speak or was your hand up from the previous bill? Okay, Delegate Weivel. Yeah, so I understand the amendment also removed the manda mandated funding. Uh, uh, that I believe is correct. Yes, the amendment strike the mandated appropriation of state funds included in the bill as introduced. The, uh, the fund will be capital by revenues from the development and maintenance of non-traditional recreational opportunities in Prince George's County. And, uh, right. and all the amendments were approved by both delegations. All right, thanks. Okay, I'd like to proceed to a vote for or against pickleball. So, um, so move all the those amendments. In, oh, there were amendments? Oh, that's right, I'm sorry. On the amendments, is there a second? Second. second. Okay, all those in favor of the amendments signify saying aye, opposed no, the ayes and a half, the ayes have it. Bill is before us. As added, is there a second? Second. Okay, all those in favor of pickleball <clears throat> by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Ms. A Mr. Ball. Chairman? Yes. Could I explain my vote? Of course. So I just want to say that um, where I work, there are some pickleball courts installed very recently and it looks like a lot of fun. So. <laughs> okay. Can yeah, I explain my vote? It. Sure. Also, this helps lacrosse, and that's the state team sport. So I think it's time for Prince George's County to get involved in lacrosse. Oh. In an official way. We have lots of yes. teams, but they don't, they don't have places to play. <laughs> yeah. Okay. The bill, uh, the, it's unanimous among those present. The bill passes. House Bill 615. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. House Bill 615, as amended, authorizes DNR to allow in Prince George's County a person to hunt deer on each Sunday of the deer hunting seasons. Uh, subcommittee amendments uh, strike hunting on public land and set the archery hunting, 
hunting safety zone at 50 yards. M move the amendments. Okay, on the amendments, is there a second? Second. Okay, on the amendments, does anybody- have, yeah. Go ahead, uh, Ann. I would like to separate the amendments I'd vote on them separately because I, I can support one and not the other. Okay, which one can you support? Uh, I can I can support the one, the one I cannot support is the one that reduces the safety zone. I can okay. support the other one. Mr. Okay, so, uh, let's let's separate out the uh, the safety zone amendment and vote on the other amendment, which I guess has to do with uh, public lands, right? We're we're yes. striking. We're striking Sunday hunting on public land is the First Amendment, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, I can okay, so it. on the First Amendment, is there a second? Second. Okay. All, those, all those in favor signify saying aye, opposed no. Aye. The ayes seem to have it, the ayes have it. On the Second Amendment, is there a second? Second. Okay, but on can, that sorry, amendment. Could somebody explain that Second Amendment? Sorry, I missed that. It, Current, currently, Prince George's has 150 yard hunting safety zone for archery hunting. This would set it at 50 yards. Which would make it similar to Montgomery County, but you know, okay. I just, yeah, that's fine, I just wondered. Delegate Can I ask Lehman. a question? Um, sure, and then I'll recognize Delegate Lehman. Oh, I'm sorry. She had her hand up before me, so. Oh yeah, Delegate Lehman. Um, okay, thank you. So, so we we've had some interesting um, discussions in the subcommittee, and I thank Chair Gilcrest for being patient on that. Uh, you know, I traced the bill back to um, then Delegate Jackson, who is now Senator Jackson, <clears throat> and I, I, no one could explain to me how that distance, the archery distance, got in there. E even DNR, he didn't seem aware of it. So I still have not seen that in writing. If you, if you look up the original bill, there's no mention of that. He is um, completely in favor of getting rid of the, um, of the public land provision, which he also was not aware of. This came to him as a request from a private landowner. Um, and so, uh, you know, I have my concerns about the distance issue too, uh, Delegate Healy, and I did try to raise that in subcommittee. And, you know, we got into a lengthy discussion about what it all meant and why all these counties were changing that distance for archery. Um, I, I, I still am not supportive and I find it confusing and, and, confu and baffling as to how that even made it in the bill. Uh, but having said that, I don't support Sunday hunting anyway. Glad the public lands language is out, but I don't support um, uh, Sunday hunting anywhere. So thank you. Okay, Delegate Ruth and Delegate Love in that order. Uh, Mr. Chair, Delegate Love was ahead of me. Oh, okay, you're right. Go ahead, Delegate Love. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Delegate Ruth. I put my hand up late, so. Um, I see the next bill, um, HB 637, also has to do with the safety zone. And I'm just wondering what that one does to have an yeah. overview of where we are and hopefully some form of consistency. Exact same thing. Got it, thank you. Okay, Delegate Ruth. Thank you so much. Um, I, I just wanted to ask, did the uh, Prince George's delegation vote on this amendment? Yes. Thank you. Okay. On the amendment, all those in favor of the 50-yard amendment signify by saying aye. Aye. I'll say aye. 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 Okay. Aye. Um, opposed? Opposed. How, how, no. How many people are, put your hand up if you're opposed. So that one, two, three, uh, go to the next page. I think it's three. So it's uh, the, the amendment carries. On the bill as amended, is there a second? Second. Okay, any discussion on the bill as amended? Oh, by the way, Trish, could you make me a, 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 a um, host so I can put people's hands down when they get done talking? Yeah, I did that just a second. Oh, okay, all right, great. Uh, Who would like, uh, anybody want to speak uh, on the bill? Now that I have the ability to put your hand down, a delegate uh, Healy. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry, I'm raising my actual hand. <laughs> um, uh, I, I, I want to explain that uh, I was not present in the delegation when this bill was discussed. Historically, I've been opposed to Prince George's County having Sunday hunting, and I'm opposed, but uh, I did not vote in the delegation. So I want to be clear that um, my opposition standing and I will be voting against it um, in committee. But um, I 
defer to local courtesy on these bills. And so, um, but this is my locale. So I feel more <laughs> comfortable taking a stand as to be consistent with my history. Thank you. Okay, Delegate Lehman. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And this is a much longer conversation for another day. <clears throat> Briefly, that a couple things came up um, in the course of the discussion about sort of the, I don't know how to phrase it, except the opt in, opt out. I brought it up before um, with respect to that snare trap bill about how other counties get pulled in sometimes or standards from other counties, like this archery standard that isn't fully really explained and suddenly it ends up in there. I also asked, um, I think um, it was, I believe, Mr. Tracy about um, the whether whether it is a default uh, position or or, or uh, policy um, to have local lands in there unless the sponsor signals otherwise. And it sounds like maybe that standard has changed because certainly Mr. Uh, now Senator Jackson, then Delegate Jackson was not aware of it, nor were the other two members from Southern Prince George's Delegates Proctor and Valderrama. Um, they didn't mean for it to be on public land. Um, and so I think there are a lot of concerns about the way these hunting uh, bills are drafted. It's, it's very messy. And um, it, I think it needs to really be looked at statewide. Um, so thank you for that. Yeah, l let me, um, I, I'd like to say a few things about this. I'm gonna vote for the bill, partly because it's a local bill, but also, you know, if when it comes to bow hunting, especially 50 yards is standard, I believe that's in Montgomery County and a couple of other counties. And I think that, um, I think for bow hunting, 50 yards is fine. And just, I'm thinking about half a football field and the fact that public private lands can often have you know, trees and stuff like that, that might intercept, that, that, that might limit the bow and arrow. Uh, but anyway, so I'm gonna vote for the bill. Any, anyone else? Okay, let's proceed to a vote. Um, all those in favor of House Bill uh, 615 signify by saying aye. 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 Who's opposed? I am. I am. Okay, so Lehman, Ruth, Love, Healy, Terraza, anyone else? Okay. Yeah. What? Uh, Stewart is opposed. Oh, uh, Vaughn. Okay. And Delegate Stewart is opposed. Uh, the bill passes. <clears throat> um, House Bill 636. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the subcommittee recommendation is favorable with amendments. This bill redefines elevated level of lead to mean a lead concentration in drinking water that exceeds five parts per billion. There's a required lead water testing and remedi remedial measures in public and non-public schools and makes conforming changes to existing notice and remediation requirements. If a water test sample for a drinking water outlet was analyzed on or before June 1st, 2021, and the analysis indicated a concentration of lead that was more than five parts per billion but less than 20 parts per billion, the school must take appropriate remedial measures by August 1, 2022. The amendment adds uncodified language that the bill may not be construed to alter the priority in awarding grants under the Healthy School Facility Fund. Move the amendments. Is there a second? Second. On the amendments, any discussion? Okay, we'll vote on the amendments. All those in favor signify saying aye, oppose no. The ayes seem to have it, the ayes have it. The bills before us is amended. Is there a second? Second. On the bill, discussion. <clears throat> Delegate Ruth. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I expressed this in subcommittee also, but I, I just wanted to, to thank the sponsor and say that, that I think that this is, is really an important bill because that there is no safe of lead for children and um, that this has really, you know, long-term impact. And, and I think it's it's really important. And I think it strikes a good balance of, um, you know, allowing options for school systems to, to be able to deal with the issue. Thank you. Okay, any further discussion before we vote? Delegate Parrott. Thank you. I was just reading the testimony. <clears throat> it looks like the Anne Arundel County Public Schools opposed it. Are they still opposed after the amendments? As far as I know, though, I should say that the um, MABE, the, the Association of Boards of Education, is neutral. Okay, thank you. 
Although personally, I have to say for myself, I don't really, I, I really didn't care personally what the school system say on this issue. Um, okay, we'll vote on the bill. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Opposed. Delegate Parrott is opposed. Is anyone else opposed? The bill passes. House Bill 637. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. House Bill 637 for Allegheny and Garrett County decreases the archery hunting <clears throat> down in Allegheny and Garrett from 150 yards to 50 yards. Move the bill. No amendments? No amendments. Is there a second? Second. second. Okay. Any discussion? Delegate Ruth. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I just wanted to explain my my vote that um, you know I'm I'm uncomfortable with reducing these these safety zones, and I voted against it when it came up in Baltimore County delegation. But I will respect local courtesy on this and vote for it. Thank you. Yeah, it also helps that hardly anybody lives out there. Uh, uh, okay, <laughs> you know when we drove out there. For the fracking hearing, it took forever. I thought I was in West Virginia or you, you, you were. <laughs> you yeah, actually were. <laughs> uh, Delegate Lehman. Sh should we rename it the Hardly Anyone Lives Out There Amendment? <laughs> no. <laughs> yes, let's do that. No. <laughs> no, no. I, as much as we'd like to. Okay, on the bill. Oh, Delegate Peraza. And this one is um, 50, 50 yards as well. Is that? Yes. Can, can you tell me where the, I mean, I know we just voted on one that was 50 yards, but I'm curious where the 50 yards comes you'll, from. You'll see in code that um, a number of counties set it at 150 yards and there's a list of counties and a number set it at 50 yards and there's a list of counties. And um, we're told that like in Virginia, there is no such thing as, as uh, archery hunting safety zone. But generally in Maryland, you know, uh, the counties pick their yards and, and there's a list for each uh, yardage. Right, but has, did, did the um, subcommittee look at how far you can still accidentally kill somebody with? You, you, you're not hunting much farther than 50 yards away uh, with archery. My, you know, my brother Bo hunts every weekend that's allowed and, uh, you know, it, it's, yeah, it's a, it's a safe 50 yards. You're not, I mean, 50 yards is a, is a good area for, you know, for hunters. I mean, if you take somebody like one of my other cousins, may, maybe not, but, you know, he shouldn't, he'd be around that stuff anyway. So uh, no, right. I, I think I think 50 yards is more than sufficient. Uh, and, and if you hunting you would understand you would see you know my, my brother puts all his hunts on youtube and you could tell most of the time uh you know his kills are within 20 to 30 yards at most yeah yeah i mean and i know this is not a scientific way to look at it but i mean i just did like a google search about like how far can you pull something with a with archery and um it seemed like that was Probably 50 to 60 yards was safe, but I'm just wondering how we wound up with 60 rather than like 75, for example, which it seemed like might be. It's the rate of drop also from the, you know, from the arrow, basically, you know, it's just, it's in the dirt. But can you actually. Yeah, uh, let, let's, let, let's, let's go to our uh, sportsman here, uh, Jay Jacobs, avid sportsman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I've probably, uh, I was going to use a different term, but I've probably harvested at least a hundred here by means of uh, archery. And uh, I would say out of that hundred, I doubt if any of the shots I made were over 20 yards. And when you're up in a tree stand, up in the air by 15, 20 feet, up in the air shooting down at an angle at 20 yards, believe me, that 50 yards is very, very, very adequate as a safety zone. And that's the reason why a lot of counties have gone to 50 yards because shooting from a stand at an angle, uh, most shots, I would say, are 20 yards or less. It really uh, Jay, Jay, do, do, really Jay, do people typically shoot out of a stand? I'd say 99%. 
Do you have to be in a stand? I know in Howard no. County, for example, you have to be in a stand for some. If you want to be okay. uh, successful in your hunt, you really need to be in a stand. But I guess what concerns me, I'm just going to say this, and I'm going to be voting against the bill. I'm sure nobody's surprised. But um, I mean, I guess I'm concerned that, you know, we're just looking at what other counties have done. And I hear what you're saying, Delegate Jacobs and Delegate Anderton, but I, I understand that a safe hunter um, is typically shooting from a stand and, you know, within 50 feet. But I just worry that if there's some science behind maybe, and again, my, I don't have the science. I'm, I'm looking at Google. That's not scientific. But I just wonder if there's like the 50 concerns me, like 75 might feel better just in terms of my Google search. And I'm not saying that's scientific at all. But I just, it concerns me that we're, we're taking on 50 when 50 seems like right sort of at the edge of, and we're talking about safety of the people around. So I, I, I'm just going to say I'm very concerned about the 50. Mr. Chair. Um, Mary Lehman and uh, Fraser Dalgo in that order. So Mr. Chairman, thank you. And I um, appreciate certainly uh, Delegate um, Jacob's expertise, but I will return to what I said about no one that I've spoken to in Prince Georgia seems to be able to explain how the, this 50 yards even got in that bill. They weren't seeking it. And I think this raises a serious question about local autonomy and policymaking. If this is, you know, DNR's idea that a one size fits all for 50 yards should just be put into every county, I, I take issue with that. Uh, you know, counties are different. Yeah, the southern... A uh, third of Prince George's County is is very rural, but the the central you know part of Prince George's County is very urban, and then North County where I live is very mixed. It's suburban. I, I really I really object to this one size fits all approach, where there's a, for lack of a better term, I'm just going to say it. There seem to be no fingerprints on this that I can tell. This this provision just like appeared in the bill. The sponsors didn't even know about it. And I'm, I'm talking about Prince George's, um, Mr. Chairman, but that is very concerning to me. Thank well, you. the Prince George's delegation voted for this bill with 50 uh, yards, yeah. correct? And, correct. And I, this, this bill that we're no, on that was Allegheny and Garrett. I don't, I don't, we I do have a letter. That's a, I just, that's a different bill. I say, bill. I disagree with Mr. Tracy. I don't think that was clear to members of the delegation at, at the time. I asked several people who said I wasn't even aware of that. So whether it, and I haven't even seen, I still have yet to see a copy of the 50 yards, but we, we can, I can do follow up on that. David. It appears, it appears to have come from. Yeah, thank, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, you know, I, I passed a, a few of these variety of these Sunday bills, hunting bills, archery bills. I've worked on them for years in Montgomery County because we have a massive overpopulation problem in Montgomery County. This is what I'll say. I will say. Oh, dear. Of deer. I will say this, shame on Hollywood. Shame on Hollywood because Hollywood puts out these really dumb movies and they show people shooting arrows for hundreds of yards, which is not accurate. It's, not only is it not accurate, it's actually not accurate. I think 50 yards, that is half of a football field. I, I think it's important for people to realize that's half a football field. That is an extraordinarily long way for an arrow to fly. And the only way it's going to fly that way is if you're doing something like the gladiator where you're shooting it up in the air at an angle. I, I, I just wanted to get that off my chest because we have these same conversations every year and, um, and the deer continue to propagate every year and they continue to slam into cars, go through windshields, give people Lyme disease. And I'm going to vote for this bill. I'm done. Thank you. Delegate Healy, Terraza, and Lehman in that order, then Delegate Anderton. Then we're going to vote because we have floor in five minutes. I told them we're going to be a little late, but we are. Uh, but then we're going to vote after uh, cornbread. So Delegate Healy. Yeah, I, I just would like to uh, say, I, uh, you know, obviously I, I said what I said about the Prince George's bill, but I am going to, I'm going to vote for this bill in Allegheny and Garrett County. I, um, I, I'm going to um, honor their courtesy on this issue. I, um, I also, because Allegheny Garrett County, I, 
the geography there is very different than in Prince George's County. And uh, so even though I was opposed to it in Prince George's County, my jurisdiction, uh, I will vote for this bill in Allegheny Garrett. Okay. Um, uh, Terraza. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, you know, I appreciate that. And um, I appreciate the local aspect of this. What concerns me is that we start, after we start having local bills, then we start pointing to other counties and saying, well, they have it and they have it. And lots of counties have 50 yards. And I just want to point out, I do appreciate the Hollywood nature of this. The, the source that I was looking at was something called Outdoor Troop, which seems to have be an archery site. It might not be a good site. Again, I'm not claiming to have any, it's certainly not a Hollywood site. Um, and I looked at a whole bunch of different sites. Again, I'm not claiming to have any particular scientific knowledge of this. I just would like us to be looking at science when we do this rather than Hollywood or what other counties are doing. And I do appreciate the local nature of this, but I, like Delegate layman has been talking about, it is concerning to me when we start to talk, um, keep pointing to other counties as examples of why we should be doing this and why this is safe. And I'd like there to be a discussion maybe in the future of what sort of safe range is. Okay, Delegate Lehman, and then we're gonna vote. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chair. Just one more point, very quickly, one more perspective of from a bow hunter who happens to be my husband who said, we do shoot from the ground in, in Boy Scouts. He's a Boy Scout leader. Um, that would be a minimum 50 yards, but he said it does depend on whether you're talking about what kind of bow. High-powered bows, like the ones most people use to hunt, are legal past, six, past 60 yards. Thank you. Okay, on the bill. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Who's opposed? So opposed is gonna be Lehman, Terraza, uh, anyone else? Okay, the bill passes. House Bill 639. Yeah, that's mine. Um, House bills, this is also one that the committee did not actually, subcommittee did not actually meet on, but um, it is a local bill from Southern Maryland. It's the authorizes it, the Tri-County Council for Southern Maryland to act as a property manager as defined for the Southern Maryland Regional Agricultural Center owned and located within St. Mary's County. It's owned and owned by and located within St. Mary's County. And the bill takes effect July 1st, 2021. I would move, there are, um, let's see, the bill does not materially affect any state finances and it authorizes an existing property management agreement. It does not materially affect local government finances or operations. And uh, the cross file passed the Senate. So the motion is favorable. Well. Second. 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 Okay, thank you. There is an amendment to add sponsors. I don't know if we want to, that, but that- No, the we're not doing to that. To the Senate, we don't need to do that. We're not doing that. Okay, on the bill without amendments, uh, and there's a second. All, the, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? The bill carries unanimously among those present. I believe Delegate Parrott is absent. Uh, so he, he's absent. It's not a family emergency uh, or, any, or having to go to another committee or anything like that. So he's just absent. House Bill uh, 693. Uh, Jim. Oh, Mr. Chairman, um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. House Bill 693. As it establishes that provisions that give a riparian property owner or occupant first choice to set or position a net or haul seine to catch fish in front of the property do not apply to Cecil County. The bill also repeals specified fishing restrictions in Cecil County. Um, Mr. Chairman, the, the subcommittee amendments uh, prohibit the placement of nets in the Susquehanna River. Uh, move the amendment. Uh, is there okay. a second? Um, Jim, uh, th this uh, Harford County didn't want to be included in the bills, so they're not included, correct? That's right, Mr. Chairman. This is for Cecil County. Okay. All right. On the amendments, um, 
will vote, will vote. All those in favor of the amendment signify by saying aye, oppose no, the ayes seem to have it, the ayes have it, the bills before us is amended. Is there a second? Second. second. Delegate Love um, has her hand up. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, Mr. Subcommittee Chair, can you just explain, am I right that this says that um, somebody who would have the right of first refusal saying you can't put a net in front of my property now will not have that right? Do I got that right? Um, the section of the code um, that Cecil County is um, taking themselves out of does concern exactly those issues. Okay. So in Cecil County, property owners would now no longer have the right to say you cannot put a net in front of my property. Yes. Those are the provisions in this. There's um, the, this section of law includes notice provisions, includes riparian rights, and Cecil County is uh, adding their uh, county to Anne Arundel, Calvert, Queen Anne's, Kent, and Somerset to remove themselves from this. Uh, Baltimore, Caroline, Charles, Dorchester, Prince George, St. Mary's, and Talbot, uh, and they've, they've exempted themselves from the notice provisions of this section. So the answer to your question is yes. <laughs> okay, thank you. Delegate Stewart, then Delegate Wyville in that order. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. Just a quick question, uh, Delegate Gilchrist. Uh, did CCA's opposition, that's the recreational anglers, did it drop off with the amendment or are they still opposed? They, they were in subcommittee yesterday and we talked about it at length with DNR and the subcommittee, um, we felt that um, we discussed it enough. I don't know if they actually uh, removed their opposition or not. Okay, thanks. Delegate Weivel. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So the amendment you said added the, uh, you can't place a net in the river. Do the original provisions remain or is the bill amended to the, suggest the, the amendment? The other, the other section in this bill is 4-717. And what the, what the subcommittee amendments do is say that you still can't place nets in the Susquehanna. But the original provisions of the bill apply. That's just been added. That's what I'm asking. Yeah, that's right. Okay, thanks. Um, okay, let's vote. Although I believe we uh, passed the amendment, right? Yes. Okay. We did. Yep. Okay. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, the bill uh, passes. House Bill uh, 840. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. House Bill 840 expands Sunday hunting in Somerset County by authorizing DNR to allow a person in Somerset County to hunt any game bird or mammal on a Sunday during the open season for that game bird or mammal. Move the bill. Move favorable. Is a uh, second. And there's a second. Um, uh, okay, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, uh, opposed? No. Uh, Eamon, Delegate Love, Delegate Ruth. Anybody else opposed? Terraza. I got Lehman, Love, Ruth, uh, Terraza. Okay, the bill passes. Uh, we did 857. Let me skip over 1025 and go to 1069. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Subcommittee recommendation is favorable with amendments. Uh, as amended, an owner of residential rental property that is served by private water supply well must provide for water quality testing every three years and disclose the results to tenants. When a water quality test reveals that a private water supply well is contaminated, the owner must notify MDE and the local health department and address the contamination in a specified manner. Amendment number one is technical. Number two, the bill apply only to testing and disclosure requirements for rental properties and adds language to require owners of rental properties to take specified actions when a water quality test reveals that a well is contaminated. Move the amendments. Is there a second on the amendments? Second. second. Okay. Uh, 
Uh, Will, do you want to speak on the amendments or the bill itself? Uh, the amendments. Go for it. So the amendment only applies to residential rental property, not to um, owner occupied. To owner yes, it, it's just for residential rental properties. Owner occupied, it's not covered. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Delegate Jalisi, and then Jacob. And what is the definition of a uh, contaminated uh, con con contaminated water? Sorry. Um, Kristen, do you have that handy? I don't have the reprint right in front of me. Good, Kristen. Uh, sorry, I had to unmute. So that is tied to a standard that has by ident been identified by EPA for the federal drinking water standards, or if it exceeds a harmful level um, set by the department. Can you give me a few things which are con which are included in it? Like, is iron included in it, or is it just bacteria? Um, you know. So like the Federal Safe Drinking Water Act covers bacteria, chemicals. Um, you know, really anything that shouldn't be ingested. And so, um, you know, I'd have to look up the list, but, you know, they're just anything that would exceed those federal, which was is your public water supply, anything that exceeds those standards would be covered um, in, for the private water supply. So, uh, so there's no difference between what the count, Baltimore County, for example, requires versus what the federal government requires, or is it following the federal government guidelines? Well, federal, it's uh, the safe drinking water standards are set by the federal government. Okay. Okay. If you can send me and email me a copy of it, that'd be great. Thank you, Mr. Uh -oh. Chair. Okay. Um, Delegate Stewart. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I just wanted to quickly thank uh, Vice Chair Stein for working with us on this bill and getting it down to a level that we could create some consensus on. And I just wanted to note for any of my colleagues who may be skittish about what's left in the bill is that I really consider this to be a pro landlord, pro property owner bill, because right now the EPA recommends testing every year. This bill only requires testing every three years. And if landlords are not doing this testing, they're really exposing themselves to a lot of liability because if a, if a well proves to be contaminated and they didn't test it and someone gets really sick or you know dies, um, then the landlord would be on the hook for a lawsuit. And so we did a lot of outreach to, um, to, the, to the groups representing property owners and the realtors, the builders, and MMHA are all cool with this bill. Okay, Delegate Jalisi, we've got five minutes. Uh, we have to be on okay. the floor. Okay, don't worry about it. I'll, I'll ask for it uh, offline. Okay, Delegate Weivel. Um, yeah, just Delegate Stewart, are those EPA uh, rules, are they guidelines or is that a mandated every year? The EPA comes out with basically safe levels. So like how we did the, uh, the lead levels, and then that's actually lowering it because the bill sponsor thought the EPA level was too high. The EPA but EPA is not requiring an annual test, are they? The, oh, the EPA, oh, sorry. That, yeah, the EPA recommends testing. Recommend, yeah, okay, thanks. Okay, let's vote. All those in favor of House Bill 1069 signify by saying aye. 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 Who, who's opposed? Wyville, Otto, who else is opposed? Wyville and Otto. Well, I'm sorry, Wyville and Otto are opposed. Anyone else? Okay, the bill passes. House Bill 1163. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. House Bill 1163 expands Sunday hunting in Caroline County by authorizing DNR to allow a person in Caroline to hunt deer on each Sunday of the deer hunting season. Move the bill. Is there a second? Second. second. Any discussion on this uh, bill? Okay, seeing none, we'll vote. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Who's opposed? Terraza, Love, Lehman, Ruth. Anyone else? The bill passes. House Bill 1025, last bill of the voting section. Oh, um, um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. House Bill 1025, the uh, subcommittee report is unfavorable. Bill requ requires the Department of Agriculture uh, in coordination with natural resources to establish a program 
to collect uh, quantis, quantities of carboferrin by 2023, then beginning in January 24, uh, outlaws possession of carboferrin. The committee report is unfavorable, Mr. Chairman. Is there a second? Second. Delegate Terraza. Yeah. I want to um, thank the committee for all, the subcommittee for all their work on this and thank the Department of Agriculture for setting up a program. I think that is a good outcome from this. I'm going to be voting against the unfavorable. I still think we need a requirement. Um, I still think there are bad actors out there using this on purpose. And I would like us to revisit this again next year and want to see how the program is going. Mr. Chairman. Uh, yes, uh, of chair of the subcommittee. Yeah, and I appreciate all the sponsors' work. And we have talked to Department of Agriculture about getting more information about their program to hand in pesticides. And uh, I think maybe a letter from the committee would be appropriate to them asking for more information about what they're doing. I'll be happy to do that. Delegate Lehman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I also will be voting against the unfavorable. We had, I think, a pretty robust discussion in the subcommittee. And I very much would like to see, not just if we have time for it next year, not just a written report from the Department of Agriculture. It has just started this program back up after many years of not doing it at all, this disposal program. I would like a, this to be part of a briefing, maybe a larger briefing from the Department of Agriculture to understand exactly how effective it is being in getting rid of this really uh, toxic substance that's killing bald eagles. Thank you. Fair enough. Delegate Ruth. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And um, I, I, I also would like to, to thank the, the subcommittee chair for the robust discussion that, that we had on this. And um, I, I do still have concerns as uh, Delegate Blayman and Delegate Terrassa um, expressed. And, and so I, I would be voting against the unfavorable, but I, I really appreciate, Mr. Chair, your, your um, writing a letter as, as was discussed. Um, thank you so much for that. Yep, uh, Del uh, Delegate Wells. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So I will be voting for the unfavorable, but I just wanna raise that one of the biggest issues I had with the bill is the fact that it, it it adds a new criminal penalty and misdemeanor. And I really would like for us as a as a body and as a committee to really be mindful of adding new criminal charges to things because it does have an impact on, on people's futures, especially their prospects for employment. Delegate Terraza. Yeah, we just ran out of time. I'm happy to remove that. And we'll, when I bring this back, hopefully next year we'll be keeping that in mind. I think it's a fair concern. Uh, you withdrawing the bill? Uh, do I need to do that to bring it back next year? No, no. I thought you said remove that. I, I, I no, no, no. Remove the part. The, no, no, no. The piece of that, um, that delegate was oh, okay. discussing. Okay. On the unfavorable motion, all those in favor of the unfavorable motion signify by saying aye. 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 Who's opposed to the unfavorable motion? And that would be Terraza, Ruth, Lehman, Stewart, who else? Anyone else? Okay, the unfavorable motion carries. Bell's wrong. And uh, well, just very quickly, any announce uh, announcements from subcommittee chairs? Anybody? Motor vehicles meeting after. Motor vehicles meeting after. Anybody else? Okay, we're not going to meet as a committee after, so it'll just be motor vehicles and. Uh, you're just, uh, we're adjourned. Take care. Trish, do you have the binders or, um, Trish? Uh, should I come get my binders or Mr. Chair? Uh, yeah, I can, if they're not ready, we'll bring them over to you. Okay. I'll grab yours if it's ready.